この番組はご覧のスポンサーの提供でお送りします。Alrighty, welcome everyone. I'm Tia Boo and I am here for Ginga a u Densetsu episodes 102 and 103. Last time on Ginga a u Densetsu, we watched episodes 100 and 101. Episode 100, we had Reinhardt getting married, and、uh, it was rather awkward, a kind of a stilted episode. And after conferring with some people in the Discord, it seems that's the general opinion of it. So it wasn't just me being crazy, which is nice to know.、Um, awkward and stilted. Apparently, some great memes came out of it, some funny ones, enjoyable. But they got married. Some parts of the ceremony were kind of lovely, most of it was. Weird and just strange.、Uh, also, you might notice that I'm much darker than usual. I had to drop my camera's exposure by a notch because this yellow shirt、uh, blows out the camera super fast and it would just be a bit painful to look at. So, better to be a little bit dark than, than that. Anyway,、uh, that was episode 100. Then, episode 101 was a bit more of a return to form and like. A solid episode with some interesting philosophical thoughts and ideas in it, and a steady build up toward what seems to be the next wave of conflict to sweep the galaxy. As the crew of Iserlon is trying to figure out some way that they can, with their relatively small, seriously small fleet,、um, draw someone into the corridor, perhaps, maybe Wallen, and I think it was Wallen that was mentioned, draw someone into the corridor and, and cut off little bits of the Empire as they can、uh, in the interest of remaining a bastion of republicanism and, and democracy and not just sitting down and letting themselves die out、uh, as the Empire continues to be strong and spread. At the same time, Reinhard, being aware of this, is sending out troops uh, and uh, seems to be interested in the, the idea of combating Yang Wenli's successor, Yulian. This is also Yulian's first major excursion as a leader in military affairs. So, cool. We're going to get to see how he stacks up. I have a feeling he will be as good a strategist as Yang Wenli, and he's a little bit more of a soldier than Yang Wenli ever was.、Um, In terms of like personal ability、uh, and, and stuff. So, kind of like a best of both worlds situation for Yulian. We're gonna have to see how it plays out though. It, it could go horribly wrong or it could go wonderfully right. And I don't know. We're just gonna have to wait and see. So, let's, let's go ahead and do that. I've got the episode up and ready to go. Episode 102 of Ging Ayu Densetsu.、Uh, up and ready. Up and ready. Up and ready. Up and ready. To go, it's at zero seconds. There will be two versions of the reaction as usual. You can find the picture in picture version with the video up in the corner,、uh, down in the description, and the tower based version up on YouTube. Picture in picture version will have the video in it, but no discussion. Tower based version will have discussion, but no video in it because YouTube. And、uh, use whichever one you want, mix and match as you see fit. And if you want to use the tower based version and sync up with your own copy of Ginga a u d e n s e t s u episode 102, get it ready because there will be a beep beep timer coming at you right now to count you down to the, the, the start of the episode.
What the heck is that? Force reconnaissance ship? So it's just a recon ship. Okay. Hmm. Straight into the Empire. They're heading toward... So they're heading toward Odin? It's a trap. It's a smart trap. I wouldn't assume that, buddy. I think that's what they want, buddy. Yeah, big time. Definitely. Okay. It's a foregone conclusion, is it? Anytime there's a foregone conclusion, it's a great place to set an ambush. Okay. Oh, that's a new name, I think. I have a feeling this guy's the first to go. Good luck. Yeah. <laughs> 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 okay. Maybe. But he was right before that Reinhard won't respect him if he doesn't fight. Hey, blaze it. Okay, that's not bad. I'm so yawning, what the fuck? I slept okay? Why? Yeah, we gotta keep a distance. Alrighty. It's been a while since we've had some some air combat like this. Yeah. It's some of the coolest combat stuff. Power of just backgrounds moving. Mm hmm. Got row. Better shake that tail.
Pew. Wow, that was a cool explosion. All the sections flying apart. Hey. King of Kills. Hmm. Is that... Where's uh, Kataros? Is that her? Yep. Ah, oh, those Gs. No tension. Hey, friendo. Thank you, friendo. Ah, ah, ah. Oh, that little glance that they shared. Oh. Cool. That's pretty solid. Wow. That's huge. Power of well-trained, uh, well-trained pilots. Well, you would if you didn't have... Oh, we're going to withdraw them. Okay, never mind. I was going to say, you would if you didn't have little ships flying around and spamming you with laser beams and stuff like gnats. But uh, they're not doing that, so okay. If you pursue, you don't want to pursue. Yeah, also, Thor Hammer. Okay. But they know that, that it's clear that that's their intention, so... Hmm. True enough. Mm. Hmm. Hmm. Just carefully baiting them in. Cool. And here we are at the fortress. So, just split and pew or something. All right, what are we doing? Overconfidence, I suppose. Super low angle shot. Split.
Oh boy. Oh boy, you might be a little bit too late, buddy. Beep. Zip. Zip zap. Zippity zoop. What? Oh. Oh, right. Oh, that's not good. Oh, that's not good at all. Okay. So use the Thor hammer to prevent them from getting any closer on that f on that side, and to blow them the fuck up. Okay. Oh, it's a cool thing. God, oh, so cool. Oh boy, that's the flagship, isn't it? Toast. <laughs> Imperial Toast. Jesus. But still, you're trapped between... between a couple of fleets in an inescapable corridor. Okay. That's not good. Music speaks to it not being good. Whoa. Okay. Uh, yeah. Ah, crap. Still gonna do a lot of damage. And confuse you, put you into disarray. See? For what? For the Thor Hammer? Ooh. Whoa. Hello. I have a hammer. Oh boy. Zip zap zoobity. Wow. Okay, smart. Jesus. Mm. Oh, we're back to this stuff now. It's been a while. Oh, that the uh, oh, oh. Yep.
Victory for Yulian. Right, that was, yeah. I agree. Nice. Barely, but yes. Which is a scary position to be in, I would want to run away. <laughs> if I kicked Reinhardt in the shin, I would want to run. No more of that doubt, eh? Now a proven commander. But the losses... Ooh. Yeah. Yeah. That's what I'm afraid of. Does he have a plan for that? Oh, man. We'll see. This is just the start, I suppose. Oh, hi. Hmm. You can kick me in the heart any time, Karin. Hmm. Okay. Hmm. 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 You got to say fire. <laughs> <laughs> oh oh i mean i yeah, hey if you say so and we're gonna go reclaim highness and that's cool with me <laughs> So how are you feeling about that, buddy?
Okay. I see blue. Hmm. So everyone gets to try their hand. Good, good move, Bittenfeld. Indeed. Mm hmm. Oh, is he next? There was no choice, though. Not at that time. Not for Meerkats, in his mind. Why? Oh boy. Yeah, okay. Yeah, he looks, he does not look good. Uh oh. I mean, this illness from Reinhardt has been a plot point for so long. I almost expect it will be the thing that ends him way young. Bright stars burn, burn quickly. Shit. Okay, cool episode. Um, some of the most interesting and engaging and, like, good-looking space combat that we've gotten in a long time. Um, I, I mean, the last battle that we had was was the fight between uh, uh, Roentall and, and mostly Mittermeier uh, and various others, but that was a very mm, comparatively bland battle. You know, just ships sitting across from each other, much strategy, much talking on the bridge. Um very little in the way of like fighter fighter plane type stuff uh valkyries and and spartanians very little of that and then here 
we have this this battle. There are a lot of entirely new exploding ships, which is cool. Uh, a lot of new and awesome visuals of of the 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 little ships, and some rather clever clever use of like. Well, here we have this this scene where we're static against the background, or effectively static, and the the ships are zooming and moving. But then we we go to the much easier little trick of the trade, which is we hold the ship static and move the background behind it, uh, and then blow stuff up there. And then we use that for a good while. Uh, same from inside, same from outside. A lot more emphasis on like the the g forces experienced by the pilots and the difficulty of of being in one of these these tin cans that's moving at a bajillion miles per hour and shooting laser beams everywhere. Um, but some some really good looking stuff. I like this explosion a lot. There's there's just a lot going on here. We've got all the the four like sections of the Spartanian fly off in different directions, and that this yellow section of explosion becomes the dust cloud. It's it's really cool. And then cut through it. Uh, it's it's easier to follow than a lot of the the space battles that we've we've done before. Um, and there are some some cute moments here that are like reminiscent of of Poplin and fuck I forgot his name Poplin's best friend uh, who died very early on in the series very reminiscent of that and I think there were a couple of lines that were maybe mirrors of them we've also got a very uh, a very Star Wars experience here where we've got the the Imperial pilots uh, entirely covered and faceless monsters right so we can just kill them and it doesn't matter uh, cute works we introduce this random admiral uh who is definitely going to have a good time and definitely going to win no uh and then it's just the focus is heavily on yulian yulian's strategy yulian's tactics what what are we gonna do thorhammer is always pretty freaking cool looking i i think it's a really cool looking super weapon Got these these spiraling in things of energy and <laughs> absolute destruction in a huge swath. Really cool. Some great explosions, some great ship combat, some cool looking. It's nice to see Easterlone in combat once more. Shenkop gets his moments of commanding people to fire. And for the first time in a long time, we have a, a, a horrors of war moment here as this guy drags with his intestines spilling out drags himself and a pool of blood underneath him just drags himself across the floor i believe screams for his mother which is nice and horrifying which has always been something that i've really appreciated about ginga eudensetsu is that it doesn't shy away from the absolute ridiculous number of casualties and the horrors that they go through in dying it took it took a while for any truly horrific stuff to occur i think it was in the 60s or so when we got that that one instance of like oh geez lots you know guys with guts spilling out and missing limbs and things but um it's always been a major thing is that we go into battle and we just see ships shooting each other and then the narrator will be like yep 17 million people died in the 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 30 minutes of fighting that we just saw and you're like, oh oh Oh, oh man. And so, like, mistakes made by an admiral can, can, can cost on the order of millions of human souls, which is just horrifying and always been, it's always been an interesting element of this particular story. Raises the stakes. Uh, uh, Katara is being all close up here, uh, is really cute. Just saying, it's, uh, she's really cute. Yep. And Reinhardt is going to fight. Of course he is. So, yeah, the universe has gotten quite lonely. Some, uh, some respect for Mercats, some disrespect toward their allies who didn't do so well, and a very, uh, very kind of frightening little stinger here at the end. Um, as I said at the, during the, the ED, the, the fever and the sickness, the illness of Reinhard, uh, untreatable as it seems to be, is... It has been a major plot point for a long, long time, and I fully expect that it, before anything else, will be the thing that takes him down, potentially in a, a horrible stroke of dramatic irony that the man who lives for war uh, may die alone in his bed. Uh, 
the other possibility is that that he will maybe buy into the Valhalla faith that has been uh, extolled. I think that's the word I'm looking for. Holy shit. That has been extolled by other Imperial people for a while. Um, and maybe on his last legs and realizing it will force himself into battle, a battle that he knows he will lose um, in order to die. Fully expect one something down that line to occur. But uh, the, the dark irony in having the greatest military mind, period, um, a man who lives for war, die without it, that could be a thing too. That could be a thing too. It would be very sad. But we're just going to have to see. Anyway, I'm going to take a, a momentary break. Pretty quick discussion for this one. Lots of combat, lots of cool combat, but it's, it's, it's cool combat, and then what else am I going to say? I don't know. So, let's take a quick break, and I'm going to do a resync just to make sure all the tracks are synced up. I'm also going to grab some more tea, because I have some tea that's that's chilling in, in the fridge right now, and I want to grab it. So I'm going to do that, and I'll see you in just a moment. All right, welcome back. I've got some nice ice-cold tea, which is lovely because it's quite warm in here now. And uh, I, I've resynced all the things, so we're good to go. Let's go ahead and jump on into episode 103. Uh, if you're using the timer-based version, get your copy ready, because the beep beep timer will be coming your way shortly. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Then yeah, for sure, call her. <laughs> Who? Marika von Fe Okay. That's a lot of names. That's a very different, slightly different art style. Oh, they, they all look so much better than that one episode. <laughs> I wonder if it's redraws. I don't know. Bye, Nay. I, I don't think that's going to happen. Oh. Mm. 
Kurbel. Yeah, never happened, never could. Yeah, wow, we're going all the way here and re oh. Ooh, firelight in her eye. Wow, I know what that word means. <laughs> Winding down. And also his lovers. <laughs> oh, wow, that's such a good line. Mm. Mm-hmm. Oh. Oh. Oh shit, he's gonna purge. Wow, he looks so mad. <laughs> Unfortunately, this seems true. Okay. Yeah, me too. I'm a little scared of that. Well, he's really shrewd. I don't know. I don't know. Okay. Oberstein. Oberstein doesn't want to be away from where he, he has his, like, center of his nest, his web. <laughs> Not so much Oberstein, but... Mm. <laughs> I'll fly! You don't want blood in the streets right now. Yeah, look toward the future. Figure out what to do next. Hmm. Same image as Julian. Right?
Mm-hmm. They could be real homies. Mm-hmm. What what's the difference? Wait, okay, I love that. Maturity or compromise with reality. What's the difference? Oh, I like that. Hmm. Maybe. Yeah, that's a tall order. <laughs> oh, that's horrible. Oh, no. Oh, no, don't do that. Don't, don't teach your daughter that. That's horrible. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Almost certainly. Absolutely. It's safe, but it's also a wall that encloses you. you. Need to reach out. Right. <laughs> What's she sketching? What's she sketching, Lynn? Are you sketching Shenkop? Mm. True. Absolutely. Nope, he's wily. Yeah, that's weird. Hmm. Hmm. Maybe. Doesn't seem like a very fair trade, but okay. Yeah.
Well, if you give them information on specific location of some terrorists, that could work. Right. Yeah. Take care. Drinking. Hmm. Hmm. Lovely. Rubinsky's dying. I don't think that's what's going on here, buddy. Oh. Oh, he looks so gaunt. I feel like Dominique is going to step the hell up soon. Very interesting. <laughs> he knows. He knows. <laughs> All right, buddy. <laughs> Please stop talking. I don't want to get purged. <laughs> okay. What does he plan to do? Purging wind. Uh oh. <gasps> what, Louis? It's oh my God, Murai! Oh no! <laughs> oh no!
Is he gonna kill them? Because that might not be good. Oh, thought offenders. Yeah, that could be really bad. All right, well, if Bittenfeld is recommending not using sheer force, you know that, that it's probably not a good idea. <laughs> it's Bittenfeld. The smash first, ask later type. Okay. Yeah, you would do it your way no matter what, dude. <laughs> Wow. No. Okay. Oh. <laughs> Shit, I agree with Oberstein. <laughs> I completely agree with Oberstein. I hate saying that. There's quite a bit of doubt, actually. It's an impenetrable fortress. Oh. Oh. Fucking savage. And you fucked up a lot of times, Bittenfeld. <laughs> Ooh. Yeah, get the fuck off him. <laughs> no, it's not. Oh, man. Let's call him. Shit. Holy shit, Oberstein. 
but also, dude, uh, Westerland. Yeah. Squishy. Yeah. This will not be good. Cosmic Mosaic. Okay. I like this the, this episode a lot. Oh man. Oh baby. Nope. <sighs> I like this episode a lot. I liked I liked the talks between the various women in the episode. Some 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 cool talks between uh uh Anna Rose and and uh Hilda and then Frederica and and Cateros. Uh some cool talks there, especially the one between Cateros and and Frederica. That 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 one had a line in it that just like really stuck out to me as a very awesome line. I'm super intrigued by the the situation with with Dominique and Rubinsky. You know, like it's it's becoming more and more clear that Dominique is doing more than she lets Rubinsky think. I don't know. I don't know how how true it is, but I'm kind of hoping that we get some some moment where Dominique is like, yeah, by the way, all of this was my plan, and I've been planning this whole thing and playing the entire galaxy against each other because that's what I do. I don't know. It it seems cool. She seems like the the actual mastermind with a cool head as Rubinsky falls ill and iller. Um, we we keep doing this this yo yoing with with Reinhardt's health. It's like he's dying. He's okay. He's dying. He's okay. He's much worse than he was before, and he's okay. Nah. Uh, I still think it's going to become much, much worse, but we'll have to see. And then we have, we have that Oberstein stuff, that, that, that juicy Oberstein stuff, which we haven't had in a while. Some interesting, yes, some interesting hypocrisy in what he says. Yes, some interesting contradictions in what he says, but also some, uh, some straight up truth from, from Oberstein, which is, you know, when we when we just hear the opinions of other people on Oberstein, uh, the opinions that other people hold of Ober Oberstein is what I mean. Uh, it's easy to forget that he is extremely intelligent and yes, Machiavellian, but like his goal from the beginning was to to ensure that things in the universe got better. Because he hated the oppressive nature of the Golden Bomb Dynasty. Like, he has a very clear and agreeable goal. It's just that he's willing to use extremely unscrupulous methods in order to, to ensure it comes about the way that he wants it to. Um, 
which is an interesting character thing. It's it's pretty cool. All right, let's let's skim the episode. So we've got yeah, I've got these two. I love this this image. It's got a little bit a little bit more more clarity to the line work and uh the the darker general palette here works for me. I don't know. It's it's almost it's almost Disney-esque. Um is how I would put it. More than anything, I think he looks a bit like John Smith in Pocahontas at this point. I don't know why that's the thing I think, but it is. A long time ago that my brother was mine. Then we have this kind of crazy uh, flash-through sequence where for the first time, really, we we get a better picture of how Anaros felt about this whole situation. Like, we knew that Kirchheis was... was falling in or deeply madly truly madly deeply in love with her but we never really knew if it was reciprocated and this strongly states that it was this future is something to be shared with you with the two of you very cute uh bittenfeld being all angry and stuff with all this line all, all these lines on his face is uh it's it's rather enjoyable he's he's a fun one He's a fun one. I wonder who's in the most unenviable position. I don't know, man. All right, so news breaks through. Things are happening. Okay, so here we go. Uh, right, right. I'm still immature too. I know it myself. Was able to be honest. Yeah. Wait, where'd, where'd it go? All right, there's, there's a specific line. We're just going to fast forward slightly. How old are you? 17. That's impressive. I was never anything like you when I was 17. Compared to you, that is. I'm still immature too. I know it myself. Oh, okay. It must be after. Ah, it was narrator song. Is it the change in your feelings, is it the process of her maturity or her compromise with reality? And just this as 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 a amusing as a general thought is an interesting one to me because in a way you could say that that maturity, that the loss of childishness is in a sense the realization that the universe will not always bend to your will and that you must compromise with it. So you could say that that the 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 demands of a childish mind fade as one realizes that they must compromise with reality. And almost everything in reality requires some kind of exchange or trade. If you want something, you have to work for it. That's the compromise. Whereas a child who wants something will demand it and be like, I want it, and maybe throw a tantrum or a fit when they don't when they don't receive what they want. So I think this is just it's it's almost a throwaway line, but it it's got it's got some some like deep truth to it. That's kind of cool. That's yeah, that's really cool. I also just want to note that like we don't we don't often super often get uh Bechtel te test passing conversations between the ladies in this show and this is one of the few and it's a good one. So, that's kind of cool. There's no mention of Julian in here or any other uh, any other male characters and so that's that's kind of nice. I don't know. I'm I'm I've never been huge on using that as like a a good metric for representation of women in a show. Um and this show is not the best in terms of representing women. That's fine. It's also pretty old. But uh still kind of nice to see. So here we go. Oh my god, this shit. When you grow up, tell a man I know what you did. Don't. Don't do this. Don't do this kind of bullshit. Ugh. It's so mean. Cause everyone has done everyone has done something, but more than that, it's it's along the same lines as, as uh uh you should know what you did. <laughs> like, why are you being angry with me? You should know. Well fuck, thanks. Alright, that's really helpful. Glad we could communicate. Man, I've been on a, a trip this whole week talking about, like, honesty in, in conversations and, and, like, not being an asshole when you could just be honest and forthcoming and probably resolve the situation. The polar opposite. Anyway. 
If you're a wine, wine. So I guess that's a fondue pot? I assume so. So I wonder what Linz is sketching here. We don't get to see it, but uh, I have to wonder. In terms of strategic necessity, would they do it? Probably not. Place where the future exists isn't Earth, it's somewhere else. And then we have this to transition into Rubinsky's sickness, and they just chat, and uh, I don't really know. I, there's no real insight into their, their potential plans right now. But uh, how will people see you is the question. So we've got this this clear split between the admirals arriving on, on Highness and Oberstein versus everybody else. Nobody likes Oberstein. That's fair. I don't love Oberstein either, but he's he's got his merits. He really does. And I, I keep realizing that and re-realizing that he's he's super dislikable, but man, he gets she can get shit done if he needs to. <sighs> All right, and didn't accompany him, right? Mobilizing to start a, a, a forcefully arresting dangerous elements. This is very police statey and not good. Uh this is how you get a people to revolt. But okay, we've got Juan Luis. We've got a bunch of people. We've got Murai, Paeta, this guy, Olibera. Actually, I think I do remember Olibera. Hmm. But I don't remember them super well. Called Adam, <laughs> Oberstein's Grass Mowing. Damn. Not just a purge, but going a lawnmower. So Wallen will be arriving soon, and then they all meet with uh with Oberstein together. Bittenfeld is just furious. Are you gonna do this? It's dishonorable, and he's just like, the fuck is honor? And then he tells them that to uh to hold some hostages and exchange them for a bloodless surrender is much better than losing millions of people. And then I could crush East alone with our fleet, my fleet alone. No, you couldn't. Not a chance, Bittenfeld. No actual track record. <sighs> he gets himself tackled. I love this cut. This is a pretty cool cut. As Bittenfeld envelops the camera and then wham across the desk. Shock, shock, shock. Boom! We can really see it in Oberstein at this moment. He looks haggard. And his eyes sparkle. Putting him on my administrative leave. They will never expect it. The fuck are you talking about? <laughs> yeah, judging... Are you going to ignore his intentions? And then he actually calls out that the 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 emperor the kaiser has a responsibility to his citizens uh to not throw their lives away to to not use them as though they are a private military and he's fucking right and this is again this is oberstein is still on the same track that he was when he first joined reinhard and as before if Reinhard strays from the path, Oberstein is not going to is going to do everything he can to prevent that from happening. Some hypocrisy in it, indeed. <whistles> wow. So one episode of amazing battles, like really cool battles, and one episode of wonderful political stuff some great lines, and just general conversations. The The title of this one was like Mosaic of the Galaxy or something, which I think is is a pretty cool idea because it's like a mosaic of all these little little things occurring all over the place uh, before we maybe bring it together into a complete picture. That's pretty cool. I'm excited to see what Oberstein does next. I'm also really scared uh, for the people of Heinesen. <laughs> a little bit terrified for them. And for all of the, the homies that just got arrested and maybe used as bargaining chips. But at least they're valuable at the present, so he's not going to just kill them all because they are valuable bargaining chips. How will this play? I have no idea. 
What will Rubinsky do in his death throes? I have no idea, but he might go crazy. He might do some insane stuff. Will um, uh, Dominique ever step up and like reveal that she's a power player behind the scenes? Because she seems to be a fucking power player behind the scenes. And I'd like to know just how far that goes. Ah, All around, cool episodes. Both of them. I think I like this one better than the last one, despite the cool space battles and stuff. Cool space battles and stuff take you so far in terms of entertainment value, but what I get out of this show is the, the nitty-gritty and the good lines, and there were some solid lines in this episode. Cool. Anyway, I think that's going to be a wrap for me. So, I've been Tiabu. This has been Ginga Eudensetsu, episodes 102 and 103, I believe, right? Did I get that right? I got that right. Yay! 102 and 103, I hope you've enjoyed this pair of episodes as much as I have, and I hope to catch you next week for the next two. See you there. Peace.